All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Today, back from that plane air trip. If you missed it, it's the last previous video. I'll leave a link in the description below. Went out plane air painting during the full moon. Had an absolutely fantastic time. Got plenty of little paintings done. Nice little, uh, just a nice little outing in general. Now, I feel like what I'm going to do is come home and paint a major work from one of the smaller studies. Got the really coarse Belgian linen again. Now, this stuff is extremely thick. I think it's 450 grams by memory. Really great stuff. It's got the clear primer on it, so it's fully protected, all ready to go. Tons of oil paint, palette knife. Can't wait to get started. Let's get into it. Right. Before we get too carried away, I'll just show you. This is the one I've got in mind. This is a little plain air study I did on site, on location there. And I feel like I could do something with that. So what I'm going to do is, from this, create the colours and whatever into the bigger version. It's great to use the plain air studies because if you work from a photograph and whatever, quite often the colours are not quite what you're feeling or seeing on the day. Whereas when you're there in the moment, you get the big impression of the major colours and tonal values. Now I feel like I can work with that to create the image I want. All right. All right, I'm going to start off straight off with some white and cat orange. I just want to put a highlight in here where I reckon the moon is going to go. Let's put that in there. Might as well put that on now, eh? And go on there like so. All right, that can be there. Just got to get these ones right to start with. Get that position right and work the composition around that. Okay, I might just get, just going to establish a few marks. Just use a bit of white and blue for some drawing. There's your cobalt blue, a little bit of white. There we go, slightly more lighter value. Alrighty, now that will be. Establish some of the darkest darks. Oh, these were in crimson. Pretty and green makes a really nice dark, as you know. The opposite of the colour wheel, put them together, and there you go, nice and dark. Alright, now. Now I'm using the study, but at the same time I'm making subtle, very subtle differences. Not much, just, just that little bit in positioning and whatever else, so I feel like I can just alter that composition ever so slightly. Just feeling a couple of things. Yeah. These marks are important. Get them in the right spot to get the flow of the composition. Can use a bit of blue, a bit of magenta, a little bit of white. Just getting a lighter value here, a little bit of red and green. What have I got here? Let's have a look. A bit more red and green by the look of it. Magenta, red and green. Just trying to paint a slightly missed it out key down tonal value. Yeah, just of the distant tree line. So it's a lower key, set back further. Let me have a look at that. Bit more viridian green, bit more magenta. There 
it's starting to really rain outside. It's coming down like you wouldn't believe. Not in here, it's not it's lovely. Just feel that tree line in where you want it. Tap more of that in there. Feels about right. Okay, now I've basically got the marks of the composition correct. Next thing is, get stuck into applying plenty of paint now and get a coverage. K-Bob blue and white. That just went everywhere then. The knife bent as I was doing it. Flick this big blob of paint there. Oh, well, that could be a happy accident. We'll just leave that there for now. Now the tons of white. Mixing up a real brew here. Yeah, I had such a great time out there. Beautiful days. There was a few, there's a bit of rain around at the same time, but on the whole, really enjoyable time. And the last day really cleared up and allowed me to just go crazy and uh, paint some beautiful pictures with some beautiful lighting conditions. Beautiful, no wind, plenty of atmospheric hazes and whatever full sun. Okay, so this layer of blue is going on now. I might just put a little bit of that blue down here. Where are we? Just a little bit to work out where the... All right, now we'll go up another layer. That's the belt of Venus, that where you get the shadow from the Earth. The sun's rising on this side. The shadow is casting, the Earth's casting a shadow onto the atmosphere. This is where the, uh, the sky is in shadow. And then the next layers of colour will be the, where the sun, the setting sun, is still lighting up the atmosphere. So this part here, just in shadow. Next layers, a little bit of sunlight. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Okay, back to camp. And that's, that next layer will be magenta and white. That is just a beautiful colour, magenta. It's just, I just love that colour. Mix that with white and just magic happens. A bit more white. I can see I'm going to go through tons of white. This coarse linen tends to use a little bit more paint, but at the same time, it really seems to enhance the technique, the big chunky knife and buttery paint technique. Okay, let's put this on. Yeah, that's about right. That can go like there, like so. goes on there. And just a little bit more white, a little bit of magenta got mixed up in the works then. A little bit extra magenta. Okay, chunk that on. Lovely, lovely stuff. That goes on there. Yep, let's 
pull these two together. There we go. Bring those in to each other. They can be blended nicely. So they're not staring at each other. Stand back and have a look, and uh, then we'll get stuck into the next colour. Okay, now the next layer in the belt of Venus here will be, they call it the belt of Venus, one of the names for it anyway. Burnt Sienna and white. A little bit more Burnt Sienna. Just get that tonal value correct. I think I'll go for a bit more of the Ben Sienna, so there's slightly less white in it. Twang more burnt Sienna. Let's have a look at that. Kind of comparable to what I've what I've got over there in the plain air study. going on nicely but of course I didn't mix enough did I? Gonna have to mix some more so we'll go it again. Burnt sienna and white. A bit more burnt sienna. That's it, that seemed to match the value okay. Pull these two together. Little marks, big knife, bring them together, broken colour, lovely stuff. Alright, so we're getting there. We'll go up a little bit more. Let's go up another layer. Pretty much here, we've got the moon, boom, let's just flick her in, chunk, belt of Venus. Subtle evening colours. Next phase will be yellow ochre and white. Beautiful colour, another beautiful colour. I use a lot of yellow ochre for whatever reason. Just seems to go well with a lot of things. Plenty of white. Plenty of yellow ochre. It's great stuff. Look at that. Buttery, beautiful buttery stuff. We're getting that on the, there we go. Look at that. See if I'm matching the right value. Looks about correct. Put that on. There and there. A little bit more yellow ochre. Oop, getting a bit too much white there, hang on. A bit more yellow ochre. Lower the key. I can see that I'm going to use some, get some more white out because I've gone through the whole mix and I haven't put enough yellow ochre on. All right. Going to use the cartridges again today. Plenty of white. There's still plenty of stuff to do. All right, here we go. White, yellow ochre, yellow ochre, and white. Mix it all up, big, buttery 
stuff. Could this go ever so slightly more white? Now I'm putting tons of this colour on because the next layer, which will be a very pale green, will also have the yellow ochre as a backdrop to it as, as part of it. So put plenty of this colour on. Stuff. There we go. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the coarseness of this canvas, this linen, Belgian linen, I should say. It's a little harder to apply the paint initially, but once you've got enough on, that's a beautiful texture to work with. It seems to the knife it seems to work well once the paint's actually on. All right. Just going to pull a few of these together, a little bit of blending. So that they're not staring at each other. A little bit of that up there. There we go, it's starting to happen. It's all starting to happen. Alrighty. Well, I'm pretty happy with the way that's starting to come along. It's looking nice. So, next layer. Pretty and green. White. Mix it in with that yellow ochre. Buckets of white. Very pale green. So it's pretty and green white with that twang of the yellow ochre in it. Seems to work well. Do that down here while we're at it. Okay. Okay, bring them together. Pull them through. That's working. Bit of a work out this. Blending all these colours, but such a nice effect though in the end, so it's all worth it. Okay, that's starting to happen right. Trying to get that last bit of paint. All right, well that's all looking not too bad, so let's go up another layer. I'll use some of these blues I was using earlier with the twang of that magenta. Let me just have a look at that. Yeah, cobalt blue with a little bit of magenta in it. I can go on there. It looks vastly different to each other, but I'll blend them in. The theory anyway. Blend them together. Oh, 
Move that down there, a bit more magenta in the, work, in the, work, in the works, I should say. Right. Time for another layer. Cobalt blue, buckets of white, magenta. More magenta. Tons of white. Oh, chunky, chunky, chunky. I'll tell you what. Chunky stuff. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right. All right. On we go now, there's a little bit more magenta in that one as it's gone higher. Smear that on lovely. Big, big chunks. It's going on beautifully. Bit more magenta in the works, there we go. Nice. Bit more magenta. That's going on right. Maybe a twang more of that green up in here. I'm really enjoying tons of paint with this with this one. All right, well that's probably enough blending for now. We don't want to overblend it. I like the freshness and the rawness. Now what we'll do here is maybe get stuck into that bank right there, the reflection and just the bank itself. So go a bit of burnt sienna, mix it with some of those blues, magenta. Just trying to mix up, what kind of value we got there, yep. Just trying to mix up a bit of the wet, the wet sand, or clay, or the earth, or whatever, where the water line is meeting the dry bank. There's a bit of a darker value where it's wet. Okay. And that will be in this area here. We get so much blue there. Okay, yeah. A little bit there. There. All right. A bit more here where we got magentas and that blue color, burnt sienna. I'm using some of the sky colors now, I've got plenty of it there. So I'm using some of that, I'm trying to match those colors. And I've got in the plain air painting, bit of yellow ochre, bit of burnt sienna, bit of those sky colors thrown in to key it down because I'm mixing the ochres and whatever, and they're quite strong in saturation. Putting that pale blue of the sky helps knock it back. Not so bright. Yeah. Bits and pieces here and there.
Get some yellow ochre here, just going to change tack a little bit. There's just a bit of a grassy paddock out the back here. Put some pale green because it's all in shadow now, now, so it'll go that kind of cooler green colour. I can go on there. Every little mark you make makes a difference, doesn't it? I reckon I'll go for a bigger mark here. Oh, this one could be there. Yeah. All right, well, we've got a lot of it in now, but what I need to do is put some of these trees in. So I've just got a suggested few dark marks. I need to actually put some of the foliage in now. So let's go Viridian Green, Magenta. It's going to be fairly keyed down because, yeah, a little bit of that, a little bit of white to lighten the value. It'll be fairly keyed down because it is in the uh, twilight. It's going to need a little bit of yellow ochre. Booty and green, yellow ochre. Let's have a look what we've got here. It's not too far off. It can go slightly lighter in values than that. Mm -hmm. Bit of pale, pale colours. Bit of the pale green thrown in. Very lightly touch indeed. Little bits here and there. There we go. A bit more. That's it. Pile her off a bit. Just get a bit more of that bank colour. I will mix a bit more in, I've decided. Get a little bit more texture on texture to work with. So I've got magenta. Mag I'll use these sky blues and stuff. Throw them into there. Bits of the magentas. Half mix them. You got all those mysterious colours. All those colours there are kind of echoing in this. Just subtly blending that sky with those trees ever so slightly. It's almost like the light from the sky is kind of eating around the trees and melting in just that little bit. Just pull through a little bit. Getting there, getting there.
keep that one clean. Using a bit of paper towel here to get this keep this fairly clean, like I was saying. Pull through, that's it. Nice. Okay, come with a knife and just vary some of these. Wipe the knife clean. A bit of variety on the bank now. Variety in brush marks. Okay, things are coming along very nicely. Quite happy with what's going on. So I'll go for a little knife now and uh, just gonna work around that moon. So get some pure white, some cad yellow. Might just flick in. Maybe a touch more cad yellow, let's have a look. Bit of that cad yellow around the moon itself. Give it a little bit of a halo. Very delicate stuff with the knife. Maybe it needs a bit more yellow than that. Like that. Just eliminating the, the linen so the linen's not showing through because the linen there is quite a dark value and we don't want the dark value, then we want the lightest light. There's going around nice. It. Right, now, hang on, got to have a very clean knife for this. Because we're bringing the yellow ochre down to it all now. Now that goes there. Quite smooth paint because we don't want any any light when it's hanging in a gallery or in a house, or whatever. The lights can come down on quite a steep angle, and if you've got thick paint, it can cast shadows. And we don't want any shadows near the moon because the moon is the lightest value. Any shadows will be too dark, so we'll make sure that we've got thinner, flatter paint in that area. Bit more cad yellows again. Now there's a little bit of a ripple on the water, so the moon doesn't have to be perfectly round in here, which is comes in handy. A little bit easier, but also don't want it to be too repetitive. I don't want one moon there, another moon there exactly the same. I kind of like the idea of of it being a little bit different, even though it's in the same spot.
Get my white. Pretty and green. Little tree trunks. Just trying to work out where to put a few things. Some pure white and cad colours, cad yellow, half mix it. Half mix it with a few of the magentas. Pretty high care, let me just have a look at that. Yep. Got some yellow ochres and whites. Just trying to put a last little bit of rays here and there. Not too much. Just got to work out where to put it. See what's happening is, in the original one, I just had a little bit of spearing light. Just as the sun, the last rays of the sun was licking across and just picking up those distant gum trees in the, on the creek. So the creek bends around and goes right out there. So you've got these big gum trees right in the distance. The late afternoon light was striking. Boom, just hitting them. That's what I did in this one, like I said. So I've decided I will just put that last, last bit of sunlight as well as having the moonlight. Go for some pure cad yellow that really sting the sunset. Really popping now. Against all those cold blues, like I said, the shadow of the earth, the atmosphere, cold blue. Opposite of the colour wheel go the high key warm oranges and yellows and watch it jump. There's just a little bit of sunlight left on there earlier, a few minutes ago. I just flick that on, that last ray's coming from this way, boom, and you've got your full moon. All right, pretty good stuff. Okay, yeah, paint a bigger version at home. Got some nice colours in that one. It's a beautiful evening, as you can see. It's got all the subtle gradients in the sky, from blues to magentas. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, now I've got all the major colours and tones in there, but at the same time I feel like I need to blend it a little bit more. Everything's sitting a little bit too harsh and contrasting. Just want to melt a few of the subtle tones in and whatever else, so I'll get stuck into doing that now. Just keep smearing it through like so. Just bring it through. Slowly bringing that cool green into that magenta colour up higher and then bringing those ochres up into the green like so so that they just blend very subtly a nice gradient as the sky gradiates up because for a while there in this painting, they've just been sitting there stagnant next to each other. The sky has a beautiful subtle blend as you know, so let's keep that convincing as well as all about being mark making. It's about making beautiful marks and at the same time with my style of painting it's also about reality. Almost wore a bit of paint then I think. Also about realism, so you've got the con 
combination like I was saying you get up close enjoy all the beautiful paint but then when you stand back you want reality so you need the subtle gradients whatever else that realism has to offer okay a few more subtle blends what are we doing here pull through bring those two together beautifully that's it getting there so yeah subtle blends I want to keep it subtle Last bit of sun rays on the original. I've got a bit of last light just flicking like the same as through here where I've got the last bit of sunlight casting from the sun. Just got a little bit in the original like that too and I think I'll go with that. things are getting more blended breaking up a few lines here and there if there's any harsh line that I don't want your eye to follow too much you break it up with the brush of a knife and whatever else all right getting there getting there Let's give that a bit of a wipe off okay well that's it I reckon I got the big impression now pretty happy with what's going on I've got the beautiful play of different mark making and whatever else so obviously we started off getting the basic colors and tonal values get all that laid in and then it's all about composing the picture correctly so I feel like that's why I put the moon in first I thought I'll stick the moons in first position that and then compose the picture around it of course I've got the original plein air study and that comes in super handy because when you're out there like I said getting all those essential colors and composing the picture on site always is a real winner and then when you come home here maybe try and tweak it a little bit further you might see something in the original plein air piece that you like and you think I could take that concept a bit further which I actually did here so just changed a couple of things very subtly just to enhance the composition but on the whole when you look at both of them they look very similar anyway so yeah pretty happy I thought in this particular piece I ended up putting the last sunset light on as you saw I wasn't going to I was just gonna uh, like the original plein air piece I had those little spheres of light I thought this one no we'll just go for the moon make the moon the subject but then I found as I was finishing the picture that this area was just too many cool colors and too much in shadow and then it needed some of those high key colors to pull your eye in because I felt like of course you've got tons of brightness with the moon and the reflection of the moon but the center of the picture just needed that little sting so it could hold together and also lead your eye in and then up to the moon so that extra bit of uh, oranges and yellow ochres cast against that against that cobalt blue absolutely pops and pulls your eye through now those finishing touches were mainly like I was saying I've put all this foliage on quite early but it was just laid on quite rough it was sitting wet on wet on top of each other and they almost look like they're not part of the same painting and then clean knife have the confidence to smear through them wipe it clean again smear through and what that seems to do it seems to put all the foliage and connects it somehow connects it to the sky so I guess when you're looking at reality you've got a whole lot of leaves and you'll have dense leaves where they're all close together but as you get to the edge of the branch 
the leaves start to feather off because there's less and less of them. And so as an impressionist, you can get that same feather offness by feathering offness by pulling through and you get that same sort of subtle blend out into the sky. So I've done a lot of that, which really pulled the painting together. I just all of a sudden, instead of the, the trees and everything just sitting on top and not being part of the composition, next minute they all blend together. Decided to keep that moon fairly soft. Like I said, I wanted it to be different than the original moon. I didn't want two identical moons sitting there just looking at each other. I wanted the main moon, and this is the, the echo of the moon, I guess you could say. And uh, also, with a few ripples on the water, it will indeed jump around and go out of focus. So I prefer to do it that way. And it also gives you the feeling that the water is very soft. And that's a great contrast against some of these chunky marks. Now, getting back to talking about the actual linen, really enjoyed it. I used a fair amount of paint, but at the same time, now that I get up close and have a look, it has enhanced the uh, palette knife, chunky palette knife style technique, I reckon. So, without saying any more, let's get that camera in up close so you guys can have a look at the technique and the way it's all been applied and the thick, chunky linen. See what you reckon. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm.